So we're talking with Gavin Krill, who's going to be playing Claude in the Broadway production of Hair, a new member of the cast. And we heard a little earlier that somehow or another you made Diane Pauls, the director, cry at her, your audition. What did you do? I didn't yell at her, I swear. I, don't, I didn't know that until today. I'm totally moved that she was moved. So hopefully I'm doing something right. Yeah. Now, um, this is not your first go-around with Hair. You were part of the City Center Encores production in a much smaller part. So how does it feel sort of revisiting the piece. You know, what's awesome about Hair is, and you said a much smaller part, but like the tribe is, everyone is sort of a lead and everyone's sort of the tribe, you know? We all are on stage all together the whole time. So that's kind of different and exciting for this show that you get to be with everyone throughout the whole show and we're all leads kind of, you know? And, but I'm really honored to get to play Claude. I auditioned for Claude then and I just, I should never have been cast, and I'm glad I wasn't, because I just got to be in the tribe and experience it and fall in love with the show. And now that I've gotten this part and I'm honored to play it, now I'm ready. I just feel like I know more and I know how to... I'm ready to do it. I'm excited. And how, how in your mind, do you defy Claude Hooper Bukowski? He is stuck. I think Claude Hooper Bukowski is stuck between what his parents, the world his parents uh, live by and eat and breathe and sleep, and the world that he sees happening outside his you know doorstep and uh, right outside his window and he's got his face pressed up against the glass but he's still in the house that is so metaphoric i want to puke on myself but <laughs> but like i feel like claude is sort of observing and and awaking awake he's having an awakening of sorts <laughs> How did you come about the process? I mean, Bettina Miller, who had your part, got cast in Sister Act in London. They were looking for new Dion. How did Saj Allen, recording person, get to hair? You know, I had, well, my agency, of course, but I was in L.A. doing some other stuff, and they were like, do you want to come in for hair? And I was like, you know what? I want to be back in New York. I'm coming in. I didn't know anything about the play at all. And then as the more and more I got into it, I was like, oh, my God. I just completely fell in love, and I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, clearly you were way too young to be a child of the 60s or close. Are, are your parents from this generation? Have they told you stories of that time or even of hair? Actually, my mother saw hair so in the 60s, so she was so excited. She is such a hippie that she was, she was like, I'm an Aquarius, and did you know that this is the age of the Aquarius? So I was like, okay, you're in it to win it, and she's so happy, so happy that I'm doing this show. When the moon seventh house and Jupiter lines with Mars then peace will guide the planet and love will steer the sun this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius the age of Aquarius so we're talking with Will Swenson who will be reprising his performance as Burger and Hare in the Broadway production, having done it in Central Park the last two years. But more recently, Will was on stage in Rock of Ages, and Will sort of had a decision to make, I guess, about which show to do. So tell us um, why your Burger again. <laughs> I, I wish that every actor could suffer the hardships of having to choose between two Broadway shows. What a lucky thing. But just for the record, before that, I couldn't get a job for four months, so I just, <laughs> you know, it never times out right. Um, you know, that's an impossible decision to make. Both of those shows were fantastic experiences, and Rock of Ages is going to Broadway now, and they're going to have a fantastic run, because that is a great show. Um, at the end of the day, you know, hair is in my heart. You know, I've invested a lot of time and emotion into this thing, and it, it's, a, it's a show that speaks to everyone. It's a show that speaks to me. I've been able to perform it a couple of different times, and so I, you know, I have like a, a big investment in it in, in my heart. I'm tired of your brainwash education. <gasps> Mr. Burger, you may dematriculate in the front office. Me and Lucifer, Lucifer and me. <laughs> and having done the show for the last two years. Is there a singular favorite moment for you in the show? Uh, you know, it changes up. It changes up. I love the trip in the second act. Um, it's, it's so 
moving and deep and applicable, sadly, to our times with war and unpopular presidents. Um, I'm sure that'll change now with the tone of the country, you know? Maybe the, the lines about a, a messed up economy will <laughs> ring a little more true or about some hope with a new hopeful president. Um, but they change. I love the top of the show. I love Aquarius because everyone knows every word and they sing along. Um, and I just love my, my crazy character. And what about the audience coming on stage at the end? Did you have some interesting experiences in the park with... Sure. <laughs> yeah, we had people strip their clothes off and... <laughs> And uh, they'd come down hundreds of people every night and dance, and that same thing will happen when we go to Broadway. Yeah, bring them up on stage and, and dance with crazy hippies. <laughs>